Good morning, and grace and peace to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome on this warm Sunday. Uh, thank goodness for air conditioning. <laughs> and uh, we want to welcome everyone here today, especially if you're a visitor. We'd ask that you would sign in on the registration cards found in the pews. Uh, we also invite you all to stay for a time of coffee and fellowship following the worship service. We also want to welcome those who are listening in to our videotape ministry, those at Sibley Specialty Care, uh, at Hartwood Heights, as well as Country View Manor, and those who are at home or are homebound. I do have a couple of announcements to draw your attention to. You may have noticed uh, that there are two offerings today. The first offering will be the property needs offering. The second one will be our offering for the mission fund. And this last Friday for the Loving God, Loving People Summer Meals, we had our sort of an all-time high. We had 32 kids. Uh, and I do want to share that uh, Gloria Wills was working for her first time, and she was extremely impressed with all of the children because they all were very uh, thankful for uh, what we were doing. So that was just really good to hear. Also, the Osceola County Bible Reading Marathon is going on. There's a sign-up sheet out on the mission table if you'd like to help with that. We're trying to get through Genesis and then the New Testament and the Psalms. So if you would uh, like to help with that, please sign up. And then we had not announced last week about the birth of Gian Giovanni uh, Landro uh, Agala. And he has now been taken this last week from Sioux Falls to Omaha. And we thought he was going to have the surgery right away, but he did not. Uh, they're waiting. Uh, they're going to look at him on Monday and decide. But he has uh, some heart surgery that he needs. Right now, he's stable. So we want to give thanks for that. And then also that did not make our bulletin was for Kelly Topp. He was in a mortal accident on... Um, on Friday, and uh, he uh, was hit, hit a deer, and they took him by ambulance then to, uh, to the hospital here in Sibley, and then eventually to Sioux Falls, and he's fortunate that he just has some road rash, uh, his knees banged up, his shoulder, some uh, bruised or cracked or broken ribs, but they're still trying to find all of his injuries, but uh, just thankful because it could have been much worse than it was. Also, we had on our prayer chain, Dorothy Grote has been moved to the Good Samaritan Society in George, Iowa, and Dwayne Loritz uh, was admitted to the hospital and then was later released. And one other one that did not make the bulletin was, uh, we have a joy to announce, uh, we have a new granddaughter, uh, Samantha uh, Gio, uh, Gio Mateo had a baby girl, she is Della Elizabeth. She is 7 pounds, 13 ounces, 21 inches long, and was born on Saturday morning at 4.07. And uh, husband Nick, and then he has, uh, she will have a, an older brother that is uh, Vincent. So everyone's doing well, and we're just thankful for how they're doing. We also had on our prayer chain of concerns a prayer for Kathleen, or excuse me, for Rochelle Jacobsma's aunt, Kathleen Hall. And she had had some life-threatening surgery on the 25th and are praying for no post-surgical complications and for a healthy recovery. Those are updates that I have. Any other joys or concerns? Okay. All right. Which one is that? Oh, okay. This when you're okay. The Wednesday group that meets with Peter is not meeting this week. So, just for you to know that. Any others? If not, let us stand and greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat>
Good morning. Please join me for the call to worship in your bulletin. From the side of the roads we travel daily, Jesus calls. In the midst of our duties and distractions, Jesus says again. Even when the task seems urgent or the person important, Jesus persists. Please bow your heads and join me for the opening prayer. Father, you know us and you love us. You have called us to be your followers, and we ask you today to help us to answer that call, not with lip service only, but with all our lives. Remove all fear and doubt from our minds as we worship you in song and voice. Help us to say only yes to you and to hold on tightly to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for using us to further your kingdom. May we go forth from here answering your call with obedience and a resounding yes. Amen. Please join in the opening hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus, and it is number 376, or it will be on the screen. Please join me in the unison prayer of concern, of confession. O oh God, our Father, we confess to you that we have not followed your will. We have not fully embraced your call to us to live as your disciples in the world. We confess that we often make up excuses to follow, saying, but first let me do this. Though you have called us to work together as a covenant people, We seem to prefer working alone, looking out for our own interests. Though you have called us to discern your will, we have chosen to follow our own way. Open our hearts that we may receive the promise of your forgiveness and assurance of your pardon. Open our lives to be receptive to your will, that we may walk in your paths and know the everlasting presence of your love and mercy. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Here is the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners, that he himself died on the cross so that we might be dead to sin, but alive, alive to everything that is good in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, 
believe in the good news. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we are truly, we are truly forgiven. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to have some special music. Heidi Dalma is going to be singing for us, and we're so happy that you came back. Good morning. Good morning. We're so happy to come back. Mm. It felt like home. That was nice. Um, I wanted to share with you also, I know you've been praying for Kent's mom, and she had a scan this week on Thursday. And the tumor shrunk to less than half its size, which is awesome. And the doctor recommended that she do four more rounds of chemo, which she wasn't crazy about. But she was. She said, um, I think the doctor didn't really know what to say because I just kept saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So um, we just thank you for your prayers and ask that you would continue to pray. Um, and her pastor had said, we're not praying for that tumor to shrink. We're praying for it to be gone. So if you would join us in those prayers, we would appreciate it. Um, and I talked to Terry earlier this week about asking or asking him what he was going to be preaching about. And he said, following Jesus. And I thought, that's what we need to hear every single week. And so part of my devotion this week was, it was ironic. It said, walking with God is a choice we get to make. He won't force us, coerce us, or make us follow him. He doesn't want us as slaves. He want, wants us as friends. He wants free people choosing freely to walk with him. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his, and he is 
mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand at this time I'd invite our children to come forward at this time Rochelle Jacobsma has a message uh, for our children today so all the children may come forward Come on up, guys. Good morning. Oh, we're still asleep. Let's try that again. Can you say good morning after me? Good morning. Oh, there we go. Now we got some sound out of you. Very good. Well, today, I think I punched a button, shut myself off here. We are going to go on a little journey, and in our scriptures today that Pastor is going to read, it's a story about Jesus, and there's people following him on a journey. Now over here, I'm going to have all of you stand up and come over here by me. Come on over. We're going to move around a little bit this time, so it's going to be a little different. Come on up. Now over here, you see that there's a star. And that's the Star of David, and that was also a symbol of Jerusalem um, and where the temple was. I don't know if they can see that. No, it's just not. There you it. go. <laughs> there it is. So that's the Star of David. Now we are going to, we're going to pretend that there's mountains right here, and we can't get there from here. It'd be so easy to just go there, wouldn't it? But we're going to go on a little journey. But on the way, you can't stop and pick up rocks. You can't stop and pick up things. You can't go back. If you get tired, you just have to come, okay? So I've got to grab something here, okay? Now, and then have you follow me. We're going to go on a journey. Now, if you find something, you can tell me, but you can't get it, okay? All right, you ready? We're going on a journey. All right, here we go. Keep going. Keep going. Are you coming? Uh-oh. No, we can't stop and pick it up. We got to keep going. We'll... Okay. Thank you. Yep. Can't stop and pick it up. Okay. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't pick anything up. Nope. You got to keep your eyes on the, on the trip here. We got to keep going. Are you ready? How are we doing? Are we hanging in there? Okay, you're not tired? Okay. All right, we're almost there. Keep your eyes on the star up here. I can see it from here. Can you see it? You see the star? Okay. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, come on. You're following nice and close. Good for you. All right. Here we go. 
oh, now we got to climb the mountain. we got to climb the hill to Jerusalem. Are you ready? Oh, here we go. Oh, I'm tired. Are you tired? Okay. Yay. Okay, now we're going to go over here under a tree and sit down because it's hot today. Okay. Let's sit down. Okay. Now, have a seat, and i got to ask you a couple questions about our journey. Okay. Whew. Are you tired? Okay. Good. That was kind of, kind of a make-believe journey. Well, what did you see on the way, especially on the first part of the journey? What did you see? Candy. What else did you see? A ball. What else? A bracelet. Anything else? What did you see? Candy? Oh, he didn't look down. There is a good thing to remember. So our Bible story today is going to be talking about people who knew Jesus and knew about him. And they said, well, I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to follow you. And, Jesus, and they said, but I got to go back and take care of business at home first. And he goes, no, we are on a journey and we're on a mission and you got to follow me. Don't go back. Don't. You just got to come right now. How hard was it not to pick up the candy and the, the stuff on the floor? Was, was it kind of hard? I know, even though I said, just leave it, just leave it. Okay, so when Jesus had these people say, I want to follow you, they said, oh, I want to follow you, but, but they didn't want to go right now. They didn't want to follow right away. And Jesus said, nope, if you're going to follow me, you got to follow me. And so some of them, it was really hard. Do you think any of them just said, okay, I'm going to follow you? TJ over here said, I didn't even look down. I just watched the journey. And that is what Jesus wants. I know, I know. And you know what? You get to pick them up on the way back to your seats. But before we do, um, just know that, listen to what pastor has to say about the scripture. Jesus said, no turning back, just like our song did. No turning back. Follow me. And you need to decide that because you can decide to go back or you can decide to follow. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. And then I have a couple of little treats for you. Okay. All right. Let's bow our heads. Okay. Close your eyes. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that um, even though it's hot for our bodies to be outside, we know that the corn and the beans and everything else that we have that grows, trees and grass and everything, the food that we need to eat, has to grow with lots of sunshine and heat. Lord, help us to um, listen to Pastor today and see what he has to say about Jesus and about how we should follow him no matter what whether we're tired and don't want to come to church, whether we don't know how to pray, we don't know what to say, whatever it might be, Lord, that um, we're hearing in our mind, we just need to keep our eyes on Jesus and follow you, Lord. Um, we just pray that each of these kids will be blessed as they go through their day and that they keep their eyes focused on you as well as their families. We thank you that their families were responsible and brought them today to learn about Jesus, and we just thank you for that opportunity. Be with us as we go through the rest of the service. Amen. Okay, so we have a couple of things for you. Anybody reading books this summer? You can each, you want to pass those out for me, Skip? Would you please pass them out for me? Whoopsie. Okay, TJ, would you pass these out for me, please? Okay, now the little cards, you can take two and give one to somebody else, okay? And then on the way, if you see a treat, in the aisle, just pick up one treat and leave the others for somebody else, okay? But each of you take a card, take two cards, and give one to somebody that you see walking by, okay? All right, so you can share. That card talks about Jesus. Share about Jesus on your way back to your seat, okay? Make sure each of them get two cards.
As the children are returning to their seats, we will be doing our first uh, offering collection, and this one will, will be for the Property Needs Fund, and this is to collect monies for those expenses outside of our general fund that might come up. So we'll have the ushers come forward at this time. It's now time for our Old Testament reading, and we're going to do one a little bit different, a different one than what's written in your bulletin, and, and so uh, what's on the screen will not match. So grab your Bibles and turn to page 569. We're still in 2 Kings, but it's going to be 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 5 to 14. So pages 569 to 570. When the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, Why have you come back? A man came to meet us, they replied, and he said to us, Go back to the king who sent you and tell him, This is what the Lord says. It is because there is no God in Israel that you are sending men to consult Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron. Therefore, you will not leave the bed you are lying on. You will certainly die. The king asked them, what kind of man was it who came to meet you and told you this? They replied, He was a man with a garment of hair and with a leather belt around his waist. The king said, That was Elijah, the Tishbite. Then he sent to Elijah a captain with his company of 50 men. The captain went up to Elijah, who was sitting on the top of a hill, and said to him, Man of God, the king says, Come down. Elijah answered the captain, if I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. At this, the king sent, sent to Elijah another captain with his 50 men. The captain said to him, Man of God, this is what the king says, come down at once. If I am a man of God, Elijah replied, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then the fire of God fell from heaven and consumed him and his fifty men. So the king sent a third captain with his fifty men. The third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. Man of God, he begged, please have respect for my life and the lives of these fifty men, your servants. See, fire has fallen from heaven and consumed the first two captains and all their men, but now have respect for my life. Please join me in the hymn of preparation, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. It's number 380 in your hymnal, or it will be on the screen.
Will you please remain standing for our gospel reading? For the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. This is the liturgical reading for this Sunday as we read from Luke. Hear now the word of our Lord. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked the Lord, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. And as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere, no place to lay his head. And he said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, and the actions of our lives be accepted, O oh Lord, as you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Monasteries are known for their call to discipleship, to live a life of following Jesus, a, a selfless life, putting the needs of others ahead of your own. In monasteries, there's a special importance attached to serving one another at mealtime. There's always servers that are available if you need something and to bring food, but the monks are encouraged by the rule of St. Benedict not to ask for anything that they need, but to look out for the interests of their neighbor, to ask for them. Now, there's a famous story of a monk who is in and is at mealtime and is eating his soup, and a mouse drops into his soup from the ceiling. What is he to do? He's, to, uh, he's not to think of his own needs. Well, he's, he thinks on his feet pretty good, for he calls the server over and says, my neighbor does not have a mouse. <laughs> That's pretty good. My neighbor does not have a mouse. Well, the whole life discipleship to which Jesus is calling us to does not involve calling attention to a neighbor's uh, mice in their soup, but it does call us to applaud the skill of the one who has served it, to the one who has provided for our every needs, who has provided for the clothes we have on our back, for the homes we live in, who created us from the very beginning to call attention to thanking and making sure we thank God. In our text from Luke, Jesus is looking for disciples who will put their needs for themselves behind and put the needs of others first. You see, in today's gospel reading from Luke, Mark begins his, we has Jesus beginning his ministry to Jerusalem. As depicted in the words from 9, Luke 9, 51, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, or as the King James Version says, Jesus steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus is not going there to worship uh, one of the, the known festivals that are there in Jerusalem. He is setting his face to go to Jerusalem, knowing he is going there to be arrested beaten, crucified, and to die. 
Ironically, the first place he stops is a Samaritan village. One might wonder why he would even go there in the first place, because it's not the best place to start your journey. And there's a century-old quarrel that goes on between the Samaritans and the Jews. It's very unlikely they're going to welcome him, and that is just the case. But it does show us that at every new juncture in Jesus' mission, he's met with rejection, when you think about it. How did he start his ministry? He went to his hometown and he opened the scriptures. He read from the prophets and declared it has been uh, uh, satisfied in the reading. And his own people in Nazareth wanted to throw him over a cliff. He was rejected there. And the second, today as the Samaritans, they won't welcome him. Jesus is trying to offer uh, a mission to them, trying to welcome them. They reject him. And we know in Luke 19, he is rejected in Jerusalem by the Pharisees uh, leading the way. The disciples, James and John, reaction to this rejection of Jesus, not welcoming them into the Samaritan village, is that they want to call down fire uh, to destroy them. Now, that's not exactly how a follower of Christ is, is to react, but Think about it. They were well acquainted with the text from First, Second Kings on how God had put, rained down fire and, and, and had destroyed the captain and all of his 50 men twice. And so they feel like this is well within their, their needs to do. But what they're forgetting is that Jesus had told them only uh, not that long before that if you are not welcome in a community, in a, in, a, in a village, you are to shake the dust off your shoes and you're to leave town. You're not to do anything. But James and John, by their actions, were clearly not modeling how to be genuine disciples. So Luke, in this text, takes us to three encounters with prospective disciples and we get a closer look at just what are the requirements for being a true disciple of Christ. And although in these cases, in all three, they have good intentions, but Jesus' eyes, but in Jesus' eyes, they fall short. There's an old English proverb that says, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It seems to apply here. Because following Christ will definitely take more than good intentions. And I want us to take a serious look at this. Being a disciple of Christ is not easy. Sometimes we make it sound like it's no big deal, but it is. And the first man that Jesus encounters is someone we could call an idealist, a romantic who says, I will follow you wherever you go, which sounds really positive. But this naive, thoughtless pledge of this would-be disciple sounds like he's actually committed to joining and following Jesus. But Jesus here clearly points out that he sees through this man's good intentions. Jesus knows what's ahead of him. Remember what's ahead of him. Thomas A. Kempis said, Jesus hath many lovers of his kingdom, but few bearers of his cross. Would this would-be disciple really have what it takes to follow Jesus all the way to the cross? Now, before you start putting this man down, I think we need to realize that we too can make this mistake of just giving lip service to following Jesus. We do just enough to make it good, make it look good for others to know that we are a Christian. We might even find security in our church or in our home or in our marriage or children or grandchildren. But here in this story, Jesus dashes the dreams of the first inquirer's security by pointing out the whole strength of following him is for us to accept a sense of homelessness. He says, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. See, if we are going to follow Jesus Christ, our home, our true home, is not here on earth, but it is in heaven, and that is an eternal home. 
The things of this world here on this earth will never give us the security that Jesus can ultimately give us and in the security of the work of the Holy Spirit that is at work within us. In this second encounter, Jesus approaches a man by saying, this time, follow me. And remember how Jesus called his first disciples, it was with that same command, follow me. And they left everything and they followed Jesus. And we could call this would-be disciple a practical person, uh, a responsible, reasonable, and rational individual. At first glance, his excuse does not follow, uh, to not follow immediately really seems fairly reasonable to go in and bury their own dead. But he makes a claim to first go home and bury his father. In Jewish tradition, burying the dead was the duty of the eldest child. We don't even know if this man is the eldest child. And also, burying a father was considered one final act of respect and devotion to your family. It turns out, Jesus said, Lord, Lord, let me go and bury my father is a red flag on the discipleship survey and an answer that threatens to get this man tossed from the discipleship pool as Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead, but as far as you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Jesus' response might sound harsh here because it seems like a good thing to do. But Jesus is seeing through the reality of the situation. For one, the father may not even be dead yet. And Jesus knows that when the heart is stirred and, and has compassion to do something, to follow something, we must act on it. If we delay too often, we never get back to that emotional point we were at where we were ready to follow. And what Jesus' suggestion also in regard to let the dead bury their dead, could perhaps be suggesting that those who are staying behind, who don't follow Christ, those who refuse to embrace or lift up the kingdom of God, are dead. They are dead in their spirit, as dead as someone who, who is a corpse that needs to be buried. But those who can proclaim the kingdom of God, who respond fully to Jesus' invitation to follow me, they are not among the dead. Because they need to go out and they need to proclaim the kingdom of God. The final would-be disciple, like the first, volunteers to follow Christ. But like the second, has an excuse. But, but first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Again, it sounds like a good reason or, or excuse. We could call this man a procrastinator. His bid to follow comes, from, uh, comes with an excuse again, but first. He wants to be socially acceptable. He wants to be courteously correct about the whole undertaking of following Jesus. And if Jesus wouldn't allow the second potential follower to delay discipleship with an excuse, it would also stand to reason that Jesus would not allow that here. And so he says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. What exactly does that mean? Jesus knows that the call to discipleship is a difficult one. He doesn't want us to turn from the path of following Christ, just like Rochelle was, trying to, was uh, demonstrating in the children's message. He knows that there's going to be plenty of difficulties of, along the way, plenty of distractions to take us to a different path. Jesus' desire is that we have and that we make a radical commitment to him, always looking forward to Christ. Anything less than 100% devotion to him will simply not fit for the disciple that Jesus is looking for. No excuse of ours will do. And the image of the plow Jesus used is a moving image. One must walk behind the plow in order to get the field tilled. And even with today's technology, the field will not get plowed by the, uh, by the farmers simply thinking about it in their house. At least not yet. <laughs> Doesn't say they may do that in the future. But back then, you for sure had to be out behind the plow. 
Uh, and there's a nugget in this illustration. Jesus does not leave us where he finds us. Discipleship is not a motionless estate. And if we are moving forward, we should have the next slide up. If we are moving forward in our relationship with Christ, we're going backwards. Do you hear that? If we are not moving forward in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we are going backwards. So, where does that leave us? If none of these people who had what seemed like good excuses to be disciples, where does that leave us as disciples for Christ today? For not the idealists or the practical or the procrastinator are good enough. Jesus seems to be asking us, <coughs> excuse me, if we are willing to give up everything to follow him especially on this path. Remember, he has set his face to go to Jerusalem, to the kingdom of God. If that sounds like a relationship that involves nothing but pain, suffering, and sacrifice, then the answer might be, no, I don't want this. But Jesus is not trying to lure us into a dysfunctional or destructive relationship. What Jesus is offering us is a life of intense happiness, of deep fulfillment, and of unending love. We must be prepared to do whatever it takes to follow him. For a half-hearted commitment simply will just not do, especially in today's world. So how does that happen? Well, today's scripture teaches us that happiness will come if we are compatible with Jesus in several ways. We need to share his determination to want to travel to Jerusalem, not to go to the old city, but to travel to Jerusalem in the sense that we are going to follow Jesus all the way to the cross, all the way to the end of our life. And if our focus is on Wall Street, Capitol Hill, or Hollywood, the places where we find promises of, of money, of power, or fame, we will find ourselves falling out of our relationship with Christ. It is only by traveling with him to Jerusalem and living a sacrificial life will we find our deepest needs fulfilled, and we will really find the joy of what it means to follow Christ. And second, we need to put our faith in Jesus rather than in any creature comforts of this world. We have all kinds of comforts, especially here in the United States. And we are challenged to trust Jesus to give our lives meaning and balance and security. And so often the world around us is promoting that it's going to come from our bank accounts, our pension funds, our media rooms, our luxury sedans. Maybe it's a hot tub or a fiber optic internet. True happiness, true happiness will not come from anything of this world. It'll only come through our faith in following Jesus. And finally, we are challenged to look ahead, not back. It is so tempting for us to gaze back over the past and say, what if? What if I had done that? What if I had done this? To always second guess ourselves. Any happiness we're going to experience is going to come from our looking ahead, always looking forward with a hope for that eternal life. Any fulfillment we're going to feel is going to come from moving forward with faith. And any love we enjoy is going to come not from trying to get a set of new friends or maybe a new spouse or new relatives, but instead from building a future, a new future with our existing friends with our spouse and our relatives. Our commitment to follow Jesus is a very serious thing. I want to make that clear. We must not take this call to follow him lightly. And if we're going to survive in this world and make it into the next, we need to consider how we follow Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, you are the father of the forsaken, you are the helper of the weak, you are the supplier of the needy, and you have diffused and proportioned your gifts to body and soul in such sort that all may acknowledge and perform the joyous duties of mutual service. 
You teach us that love towards the human race is the bond of perfection and the initiation of your blessed self. Open our eyes and touch our hearts that we may see and do both for this world and for that which is to come, the things which belong unto our peace, and to promote the peace that only you provide. Help us to follow you with all of our heart, putting aside excuses or our intentions or half-hearted commitment. May we go all in in following you. Let us help us put you first in our life with a goal of eternal life at the end and that that is something that we all work through each day. Strengthen us in the work that we have undertaken, given us counsel and wisdom, perseverance, faith, and zeal. And in your own good time, according to your pleasure, lead us to an everlasting end that you have promised for all of us. Pour into us a spirit of humility and let nothing be done but in your devout obedience, but in our devout obedience to your will. Thankfulness for your unspeakable mercies and love for your adorable Son in Jesus Christ our Lord, that we can truly follow you. O Lord, we come to you knowing that uh, you are the great healer, and it's well within your power to bring health and healing to those who need it. And so we rely on your work through modern medicine, doctors and nurses and therapists, to bring comfort to those who are in need. And where there is a will, Lord we, Lord, we pray that you will restore those who are sick and wholeness and bring them back to healing. And so this morning, we especially pray for Giovanni, that, um, Lord, as they look at possibly doing heart surgery, that his heart will improve and his breathing will improve and that he can uh, continue in this fight for life. We also pray for Kelly Topp as he recovers from his motorcycle accident and severe um, uh, road rash and just want to pray and give thanks that it wasn't any more serious than it was. We pray for Carol Doss as he recovers from an infection in a hospital stay, as well as Dwayne Loritz who, who is recovering from a bladder infection and also is back home in the, in the nursing home. We pray for Dorothy Grote as she adjusts to the Good Samaritan Nursing Home in George, for Kathleen Hall, that she has no post-surgical complications and a good recovery, for Les Powers as he recovers from uh, an implant for his hearing and uh, for it to work, and for Dorothy uh, Funk as she recovers from her hip surgery. We also pray for McKenzie uh, as she will be going in this week for <clears throat> Uh, seeing a specialist in Mayo, and we pray that they can find uh, a cure for her. And for Logan Halls as he recovers, uh, and that his body will accept the Nussbar. For Marge DeBerg as she battles non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. For Ronald Henke who has bone cancer. Violet Byers who has, uh, uh, battles her cancer. For Ruth Jurens, and uh, we lift up Marsha Dauma as... Uh, She's uh, partway through her treatment, is doing very well, and we give thanks uh, that the tumor has shrunk and will continue to shrink, and for Eliza Jansma as he battles his cancer. We pray for those families who have lost uh, loved ones recently. We lift up uh, the families of Ed Mendering and uh, his wife Leona and the rest of the family. Lord, we also give you joy uh, for those joys in our life. We give thanks for a new birth for Della Elizabeth Giamatteo and just give thanks for that. And we, Lord, we, we also pray for uh, safety, Lord, especially as people travel in this uh, holiday week with Thursday being the 4th of July. Be with our nation, Lord. Help us uh, to heal uh, and unite, uh, especially in our time of such uh, divisiveness, and as we, especially as we reach out to the world around us, we pray for peace in the Middle East, and Lord, uh, we pray that you would uh, fulfill all of our needs, and we know that you are the one who is all-powerful and all-authoritative, and so we come to you, O Lord, bidding your grace and mercy to be upon us and upon our community Lord, help our meal that we do on, on the noon hour continue to reach out to the community and to meet its needs. And Lord, we come now praying that prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will continue our worship with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Uh, this offering will be for our mission fund. And the verse for today comes from Luke 9, 61 through 62, from the message. So this is similar words that we read earlier. And then another said, I'm ready to follow you, Master, but first excuse me while I get things straightened out at home. And Jesus said, no procrastination, no backward looks. You can't put off God's kingdom until tomorrow. Seize the day. Let us pray. O God, our Father, from whom we receive both our gifts and the power to give, 
Grant that these offerings which we bring before you may be used for your glory and to promote the mission of this church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Living for Jesus, number 372, and the words will be on the screen.
And now hear this charge. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do everything in the name of God and Christ. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. Okay.